Hello. A lot of people ask me, what is a healthy romantic relationship? What does it look like? And that's a really good question. And why do people ask me? Well, I actually do have a very healthy romantic relationship. Now, it wasn't always like that. So I have some contrast and I have the, the experience of what not to do and where I've come has helped shape who I am today in my relationship with my husband. So I'm going to share with you a little bit of the journey, what I learned on the way, and what are some of the significant traits or, or key characteristics of what makes a relationship work and go from strength to strength. Firstly, we need to realise that relationships are based on how we relate to ourselves. And this is the biggest factor in what determines a healthy relationship with someone else outside of us. So we all know or we're aware that our external world is a direct reflection of our internal world. As above, so with, so below. As within, so without, one of the hermetic principles. We know that the external world, the simulation, is here to show us what needs to be healed, what is an illusion that's keeping us in pain and suffering, and what is real, which is love and unity. So when we begin to experience a lot of flux in our lives, a lot of drama, a lot of chaos in our relationships with other people, we can be sure that that same thing is happening within us. There is a disconnect, a chaos, a fear, separation within us. There is fractures and shattered remnants of who we are needing to become whole again. Now, the process of growing up from childhood to adulthood is usually wrought with much learning and growth in terms of reintegrating those shattered parts of us to become whole again. Now, of course, there's many of us who don't go through the process of seeking healing and wholeness, but I'm talking for that to those specifically who are interested in healing and wholeness and finding peace in this life on the spiritual journey. So we all know how important it is that we do look at healing the fragmented aspects of ourselves. Now, I talk a lot about early developmental trauma and how that does shape our view of the world. And it certainly is no less when it comes to relationships. The way we view the world of relationships is absolutely directly linked to our first relationships in our life, those we had with our primary caregivers. So we also are exposed to a certain set of beliefs around how relationships can work through our caregivers. So they demonstrate that to us in the way they relate to each other and to themselves. Now, of course, this also goes further into our culture, the media, um, our friendships at school and in education and in um, work life. All of these kind of relationship dynamics affect us. They influence us as to what is the, the normal, what is considered the benchmark of a good relationship. And so we do tend to look out at the world and compare our relationship to others and decide whether ours is good or not, are healthy or not. But ultimately, we cannot do that. And I've talked before about this. We cannot compare our life experience to anyone else in, the, in this uh, world. And that's because we only have a unique view of perception. No two people share that same lens. So this lens is created when we're little kids. So, you know, someone that you are admiring in their relationship might have had a completely different um, programming installed when they were kids because their parents perhaps had a wonderful relationship or had a terrible relationship or anything in between, but we cannot compare to others. 
the way we can ensure that we know we are heading in the right direction in healing our relationship is by looking at our relationship with ourselves. I'm sure you've heard this before, but we cannot change another person. We can only change ourselves. So if you're struggling to find another person or you're in a relationship that seems to be at odds at the moment, the best thing you can do is only focus on changing yourself. That is the key. Now, when we change ourselves, when we start to grow and heal and transform within, our outer world will follow suit. So our outer world is a direct reflection of our inner world, as stated earlier. So we must only focus within. Now, how do we do that? Well, firstly, we need to remember that the foundation of a healthy experience and relationship is self-love, self-value, if you like, self-worth. Do we feel worthy of being? I'm not talking about doing here what you produce, create, and achieve in this world. Do you feel worthy of just being alive, being here, taking space, breathing here? How do you feel about who you are, as you are, what's and all? This is the fundamental question that we need to ask ourselves when we're struggling with relationships. Are we okay with us, with who we are? Ultimately, we want to get to the place where we love and appreciate ourselves. And honestly, the best way we can do that is a spiritual perspective. It's knowing deep inside that you are a spark of the creator. You are a child of the divine. You have the essence of pure love making up your being. Now, how can we judge that? If we truly, truly believe that, then how can we judge ourselves as bad or unworthy? We would essentially be judging source, the divine, because we are. We share the same I am presence. And so if this is something that is a struggle for you, then this is the first place you need to start. It really helps to understand our place in the existence of time and space and beyond. The fact that we are eternal, multidimensional beings, that we go on forever and ever as pure love. And right now we're having a human experience, but that is not the end of it. We need to really get okay with this concept, I believe. What has helped me in my relationship with myself and my external relationships has been this very core concept. Now, travel back a decade ago in my life, I didn't have this core belief and understanding in my life. I was struggling on the surface of things. I identified with this body and with this mind. I thought that was all there was. And so I created as many justifications as I could as to why I was worthy of being. But it all had to do with the simulation, the external world, what I could do for others, what I could be in the other's eyes. It very much ties up with the program of desire and approval so that you feel worthy. So this is the starting point. Now, after you've grasped this understanding and you know in your heart that you have every right to be taking space and time here, just being, then you will start to transform. Everything you do in this life is a direct reflection of how much you love yourself and the world and source. Everything is a call for action. Oh, sorry, for love. Everything is a call for love. Every action is a call for love. And so whether you are kind to yourself or treat yourself badly is a call for love. And so if you are finding that you're struggling with drama and chaos in your life, start to recognise 
that within that drama story and narratives that you are holding on to and identifying with, there is a call for love there. You're trying to get back to who you are, the essence of who you really are. And it's very difficult when you identi identify with the external world to justify and validate who you are. So really we need to move away from that paradigm, that way of thinking that who we are has anything to do with this physical world. So we start to drop the narratives and stories of our worthiness there. As you begin to see that you are in unity with the divine and to start to surrender fully, the external world, the external life you live, your, your career, your relationships, your fun and play, your hobbies, your, um, your basic survival needs, your, um, all your practices and rituals in your day, as you start to surrender those up and stop worrying them, worrying about them with your small self, you start to give them up, let them go, Allow them to be taken by the divine, to be transformed, fully opening your heart and surrendering any attachments, expectations, and the way things are meant to go. As you start to let go of all of that, you'll start to feel unity. What is unity? Unity is the core essence of what love is. All is one. We can no longer judge something external as separate. We can no longer judge ourselves as bad. We are all pure loving awareness. And so once you start to understand that, you will start to create that unity in a physical manifestation in your life. You'll start to see this ease and flow, which is unity which is divine wisdom and intelligence working in your life. So you'll start to appreciate that. And this is where you'll start to attract and transform your relationships. So you'll start to see that those around you are changing. They're acting differently around you. And that's because you are embodying the very essence of love and what unity really means. When we truly feel that peace in our hearts, we generate a massive field around us. Scientists have shown that field can be measured several feet from the human body, that heart field. So we are affecting everyone around us when we spend time with the understanding, embodiment of love. How can you have bad relationships when you are walking around in this grace, ease and flow. You cannot. It doesn't work. You become a magnet for similar frequencies in your life. Your relationships will become an entrainment of the field that you already walk and live by. So this harmony starts to come back into your life and return perhaps for the first time, actually, for a lot of us. And so this is what happened to me. Now, I had a lot of difficult relationships romantically in my life. I had um, very low self-worth. I didn't understand who I really was. I didn't remember anything about that. And so I was attracting people into my life who were at the same level. Like attracts like. And so <laughs> I attracted people who judged me just the way I judged myself. I, I was highly self-critical. I didn't like myself. So what do we do when we criticise ourselves? We attract others who are highly critical of themselves and you as well. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And we end up in this cycle of pain, hurt, drama. And there's no real love in, in a partnership like that. It's conditional. You have to do something or be something specific to satisfy my requirements, my highly critical requirements 
of what love is in a relationship. And that's no way to be in a relationship. A truly healthy relationship is where the other person wants the best for you, loves you with all their heart unconditionally. Yes, the same love that Source has for us, we can have for ourselves and for others. And this is what a truly holistically healthy relationship looks like. You are with someone that you want the best for and you are willing to surrender any identities or attachments or expectations you have around that person so that they are free to be the best they can become in this life experience, to evolve, to change, to transform as needed. You do not hinder or stop them from doing that. You fully support them to the point of being able to let go if needed. Now, that is truly an unconditionally loving relationship. Now, that's scary for a lot of people because a lot of people don't realise that they have such low self-value themselves. They're highly critical, highly judgmental. So when they meet someone, they want to grip onto them as tight as possible to justify their self-value and self-worth. And that's what I did for a long time. I would have partners that, for me, it was just to validate my own self-worth. And I was giving away my power to some external force, another person, to say, here, take my power so that I feel comforted that you're sticking with me. Doesn't matter how painful we both feel inside, how much suffering we experience. And this is truly the opposite of, un of unconditional love. This is highly conditional. And often this leads to the narcissistic codependent relationship, which I won't go into, but this is very common. And so we really want to break away from this old paradigm of relationships that don't work. You are really better off, I believe, starting to learn to love yourself. Do that alone if you need to be. Be single for a while. Really become completely besotted by the love that you have within. You know, one of the biggest commands, if you like, of all of the ancient religious texts is to love God, the source of the divine, with all your heart and to love your neighbour the same. This really is the key. This is the key. This is the key to a life in peace, in joy in abundance, in love, in flow, in ease, in grace. So heed those words, very important. So what happens when you start to, when you start a relationship and you start to blossom in a relationship where you're both just wanting the best for each other, helping each other to be free and sovereign, helping each other to support them in whatever they're wanting to grow in, giving them the space and the time for that? What happens? You accelerate in your growth, okay? So I've spent a lot of time single and in relationships that didn't work. And when I was single, I finally had a big break where I started to develop myself, my mental self, my emotion, emotional self, but mostly my spiritual self. I started to create a spiritual um, structure, integrate that into my life. But it wasn't until I met my husband and we were a healthy coupling, fully supporting each other, that I really started to accelerate. And I think this is the benefit of a partnership. Otherwise, it can be trauma, suffering and pain. But if you are ready to be healthy, to love yourself fully, to love someone else just as much, then you will accelerate in your growth, in your personal growth, your mental, emotional, even physical growth because you're always supporting each other the best way possible. So that's something to look forward to and this is something I can attest to, that uh, life becomes more easy and beautiful when you have that person in your life to work alongside you in collaboration and finding beautiful growth healing and transformation and of course you need to be open to be intimate this is something that a lot of our western culture um, has 
kind of pushed down as something important, but intimacy. Intimacy is not just physical. I'm not talking about that. Essentially, I'm talking about emotional intimacy. This is one of the other keys to a successful relationship. What is emotional intimacy? Well, firstly, what it is not is what we experienced most of our lives. When we were children, we were taught it's not appropriate to feel emotions, to feel strongly or to have certain negative emotions. It was not appropriate. So our caregivers would shut us up, stop us, would leave us alone. And we learned that it was not okay to have that kind of intimate emotional connection with another human being. It was not safe. It was shunned. So what does that do to us? Well, that creates a really good program there that will run for our whole lives until we decide we don't want it running anymore. We become conscious to it. And this is what we need to do when we want to create a healthy relationship. You need to start to be conscious of how you have repressed all of those feelings in your life. And you need to learn to allow the expression of those feelings in your relationship with your partner. Now, obviously, this is not just letting loose and vomiting up emotions on the other person. That would be irresponsible and selfish. What I'm talking about is consciously expressing your emotions. When I say consciously, I'm saying you're aware of the feelings coming up. You're identifying them. You're validating them. You're acknowledging them. You're not just spewing them out. You are calmly explaining in, in a communication, two-way communication, what you're feeling and how it's something that you need to do. And then a healthy partner will validate that you had to do that. So I've mentioned this before, but it's like, you need to be regular, like going to the bathroom. You need to be regular with your emotions. And as we become healthier and heal more, we have less of these um, disempowering emotions come up. They, they start to shed. We start to allow them to just flow through us as energy before they become a um, identified narrative. Okay, so that's why as we become healthier and transform, we have less of these negative emotions coming out of us because we're learning that it's just energy moving through. We start to become a witness. We recognize, oh, I see anger. I'll just acknowledge I saw anger. I'm not going to attach it to a story or a narrative. You know, so-and-so made me angry or this caused me to be angry. No, we stop doing that as we become more mature in our um, emotional growth. And we start to realize that they're just programs running and this is just energy flowing through us. So we can disassociate the program from the energy and recognize there is a difference. When they're wired together, that's when we express a lot of disempowering emotions and, um, and um, it affects everyone else around us. But I'm getting a little bit carried away on that side topic there, but it is a good point to note is that we, um, as we grow, we become more aware of emotions being energy and we stop associating them with stories. And this is all to be shared in a healthy partnership. So you can absolutely have a beautiful relationship, but at first must start with yourself. And it's well worth it. It's really well worth it. We all want to work on ourselves to become whole and healthy. So you'll naturally attract, project that into the world and attract that back. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, please like, subscribe and share if you resonate with any of this message. And have a beautiful day. See ya.